Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. So, as most of you are probably aware, I don't believe that the carbon tax is going to save the environment at all. I, I am all for saving the environment, but I don't think that charging the regular, everyday, ordinary Canadian, making that, that person's life more expensive, is doing anything. It's not doing anything that, the, that they claim it's doing. And the fact that they refuse to acknowledge that it makes no progress is something that is a flag for me. And as you are aware, there is a, an upcoming increase on that carbon tax that we all should be talking to the government and making, you know, petitioning them to, to stop the tax increases. Before we get into it, I want to encourage you to like, comment, subscribe on this video, share it with your friends and hit the notification bell. The notification bell is a little bit of a, a stronger importance because it, um, if with Bill C-11, they turn down my me and the algorithm, which is what they can do with Bill C-11. Then at least if you have the notification bell on, when I post something, it'll come directly to your feed and we don't have to worry so much about the algorithm. All right, let's get into this. So as I was saying, the uh, carbon tax is coming up on April 1st and it's going to crush. It's going to cost so much more expenses. Just so everybody's aware, and I'll say it again. When you go to business school, you know that anything that's a cost immediately gets passed on to the end consumer. So in the case of the carbon tax, we're talking about where its impact on gas, which or natural gas, right? Which is used by our farms. So, and then there's fertilizer and there's transportation and the amount of fuel that it takes to produce the level of food that we do in Canada. And we produce quite a bit of it and we produce it cleanly, 60% more clean than they do in Europe. Can you imagine how much cleaner it is than other parts of the country? So I don't think that charging that making food too expensive is a smart move for Canadians. I think that when you're talking about the economic impact of the um, lockdown and then the economic impact of inflation as a result of the decisions that were made during the lockdown, these increased drain and then, you know, the rent going up through the roof and inflation going skyrocketing things. Most of the things in this, uh, in this world and the food in the grocery stores being 50, 60, 70% more expensive than they were even just two years ago, three years ago, we can't afford to pay any more taxes. We're not getting the income and what income we are getting is going to cover the rent. Don't forget that when, if your electricity is, is heated, uh, produced by um, a carbon emitter, like a, like a natural gas, that's up through the roof. So, and we have the most expensive communications in the world, which I don't understand why that is since the Alexander Graham Bell invented the phone in Canada. But our federal government doesn't do anything to, to assist the individual. They were, they're doing everything they can to make it. It seems like they're doing everything they can to make life a little bit harder for us. Now, Pierre Polyev has recently been doing a spike the hike and he, in Topica last week, he asked that Canadians start to put up, turn on pressure to stop the increased carbon tax coming on April 1st. And one of the people that has come out in support of that is the um, liberal premier of Newfoundland, whose name is Andrew Fury. Now, if you look across Canada, technically there are only two liberal premiers, the Yukon and Newfoundland. Most of them tend to be conservatives because let's be straightforward. They have better economic policy. Anyway, let's listen to what Andrew, let's see what Andrew Fury has to say. I continue to stand up for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians against the federal carbon tax, against the federal carbon tax. This is one of the only liberal premiers in the country. And he's the premier of Newfoundland, which has a considerable amount of oil offshore and fisheries and other things, important stuff. I am now asking Ottawa to pause its planned increase to the carbon tax set for April 1st as the high cost of living is enough of a burden on families. Here's the full letter. So here we can see he wrote it to the right honorable Justin Trudeau office of the Prime Minister of Canada, you know, there's the address, I'm sure, of the office, not necessarily his particular office. 
and there's his email if you care to send uh, Prime Minister Trudeau an email. And remember, in Canada, if you send a letter to any member of parliament through the post office, there's no stamp. There's no fee for that. You can mail that for free because it's going to a member of parliament. So if you want to write a letter, if you want to profess your dislike of, or maybe your support of the carbon tax, you can do that. Dear Prime Minister, workers and families in Newfoundland and Labrador throughout the, and throughout the country and indeed around the globe continue to face the most significant cost of living crisis in a generation, probably three generations. For the past two years now, Canadians have endured persistent and punishing inflation coupled with the most aggressive upward interest rate trajectory in the history of the Bank of Canada. I say generations because we probably have to go back to the Great Depression of the 1930s to understand the economic crisis that we are currently facing. But at least that was, you know, ignorance. This is manufactured. So in Newfoundland and Labrador, for the most vulnerable, it has been a particularly difficult time. After years of increasing living costs, there is a need to fully grasp and address the magnitude of inflation's effect on citizens, particularly those most in need. The government of Newfoundland and Labrador has deeply invested in environmental sustainability. We understand the imperative and are keenly attuned to the unique opportunity the need to decarbonize presents our resource-rich province. Our plan for climate action has so far lowered our greenhouse gas emissions to 8 million ton a year, the lowest since 1992, and well below the 10 million ton per year average of the past decade. Right now, in collaboration with federal partners, we are providing funding of up to 22 grand for eligible residents who switch their home from oil to electric. We are receiving applications in record num volumes, 2,000 applications and as of the end of February, with 1,200 applicants currently having the work completed or are pre-approved to be completed. I should have put my, my glasses on. This underscores the remarkable <clears throat> interest in decarbonization efforts in our province. We have realized significant milestones in the transition of a low carbon economy, but we know we need to do more and we are actively pursuing progress. So even though he's asking to turn to sell the people are, uh, see, this is what I'm suspicious about, right? His wording is such that he's saying, you know, we're doing everything you wanted to do. And he's, he just really sounds like he's brown nosing, right? We are highly committed to the social and economic well-being of our people. We are prioritizing the needs of individuals facing financial hardships and working towards solutions that alleviate their burdens wherever possible. The government of Newfoundland and Labrador have announced more than half a billion dollars in targeted short long-term measures to help residents in affordability since March 2022, including increased now here's the thing right increasing the supplement of the seniors benefits so we know that the federal government is always going on about oh we're helping seniors right what well, if you want to help seniors you should just you know make sure that they can afford to live bring the cost of living down because seniors are on a set on, on a budget that has already been set for when they worked 50 years uh eliminating retail sales tax on personal property insurance <laughs> so if you got if you know if you want to get insurance they're not going to charge you gst reducing the cost of Registered vehicles. <laughs> oh my God. So you're reducing the cost of registered vehicles while you tell yourself that the carbon tax got to go. Am I the only one who sees a conflict of interest in that? A contradiction at least? Providing free driver medicals for people 75 years of age and older and extending the provinces, the provincial tax reduction on gasoline and diesel until March 31st, 2025. The coming almost 25% increase from 65 to $80 per ton in the federal carbon tax April 1st is causing understandable worry as people consider how they will manage the mounting financial strain. We ask for collaboration of the federal government to address the ramifications of the current challenges famous face and to not compound them. I respectfully re request that you consider pausing the implementation of the April 1st carbon tax increased at least until the inflation stabilizes, interest rates lower and related economic pressures on the cost of living sufficiently cool. I look forward to your response. Yours truly, Dr. Andrew Fury, Premier, and he CC'd the Minister of Finance and the Provincial Treasury Board. I think it's a stunt. I think that he's just saying, like half this letter is talking about all the steps that he has taken to help 
the um, people of Newfoundland. And honestly, I think that that's really all this letter is designed to do. I think that they all probably got together over an email and said, well, what can we do to make it look like you're fighting for the people? Because we know that we're going to lose the next election in Newfoundland. We know that we're going to lose elections across the board. We know that the people are not going to support, are no longer supporting the Liberal Party, except for in a small, couple of small, really densely populated downtown cores across the country. So what can we do to make it look like it? And so the good... Two thirds of the letter reads like a, like a campaign promise, doesn't it? And then he talks about how you know, well, oh, well, please don't initiate the carbon tax, so that now they'll get this idea in Newfoundland that he tried to take on the big mechanism of of Ottawa and Ottawa ignored him, and please don't, you know, don't not vote for me. You want to convince me that you're going against Ottawa? You should walk across. You should switch parties, right? You should all of a sudden become an independent. Like you should, you know, do something dramatic because it's going to take something dramatic. The amount of money that the Liberal government requires to fix the problems that they created and they think that the individual should pay it. They don't care about breaking the system and they don't care that they're breaking the country. If they did, they would have stopped years ago. They simply do not care. They're flying around the world in jets telling you that you can't drive a car, that you got to take the bus, that you got to carry your groceries through the snow on rollerblades. Anyway, I think that it's a bit of a stunt and I uh, just wanted to show you exactly what, what was what. Uh, I'm going to wrap here. I appreciate you listening. I would encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'll talk to you next time.